Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. It's a creator day. God is mother and father. God is creator. We are here in these seats today, each and every one of us, because we have a mom. True? Can I get it? I actually, it would be a surprise to you, most of you, that I actually asked to preach today. Last year, I was, it was my turn to preach, and I thought, well, this is curious. I'm a transgendered male. Why am I preaching on Mother's Day? <laughs> we have Reverend Kathy Patrick. She preached on Father's Day. <laughs> yeah. But I regret. Today is an important day for me because I have a great passion for the women of our community, for the women at large in the world, for our own dear mothers, whether they be with us or in heaven with God. Today is an important day for me to kind of ask you in a way to suspend the normal way that we do a worship service. I'm going to be asking me, I'm going to be asking three of our sisters to join me on the podium today so that we may show you maybe the passion, the love of the two women in this Bible verse, verses. Ruth is a small chapter. It's only four, four chapters. It's a small book in the, in the scheme of things, but powerful and moving and important because these two women, these two women are directly related to Jesus. They have Obed, their son. He was Jesse's father. And Jesse was David's. And we know that Jesus comes from David's lineage. So after we're finished here, and we've suspended just momentarily this part of the service, I want you to think about going home and reading the entire book of Ruth with different eyes, with a different heart with different views. I want you to know that we are in the Bible for many, many stories. This is just one of them. This is just the women, or some of the women in the Bible. The women who have things that have to be done so that it may come to pass. These are two. There are many more. There are gay men in the Bible. The centurion that we speak about every Sunday when we consecrate communion asks for his boy, his servant, to be healed. And he doesn't want to trouble Jesus. He doesn't want Jesus to go anywhere. He just wants Jesus to say the word. And his boy will be healed. And Jesus says, go, it's done. Never, ever have I seen such faith. These are your people. These are our people. These are the people that we come from. These are our ancestors. We are in the Bible in every shape and form possible. Just because the religious right, or whatever you call them, says that we're not, I think that it behooves us to read the scripture with different eyes, a different heart, a different mind, a different be open to say, yeah, hey, you know what? Jesus had two lesbians in his lineage. Hmm. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Somebody's got an aunt somewhere. <clears throat> you know, before I begin to preach my sermon, I want to take a moment to, and I would be, be remiss, and Dick and Joe would be all after me if I didn't say that today, today, is the third anniversary of our pastor. I don't 
don't know when his warranty is up. thousand miles. <laughs> he came to us with a hundred thousand miles. It's all the same. Anyway, um, we have a lovely little cake that says happy anniversary. He got after me. No, I told you I'd be late. And here you are now, just coming in. I said. Kind and gentle spirit, God, I come to you today humbled by just one of the many, many beautiful stories that you have given us about our ancestors, about those who have come before us and laid the path. I thank you for this very beautiful and wonderful community that I'm a part of. A wonderful pastor who, with a beautiful sense of humor, and Jim, who keeps us both in line for time and job. Give them strength and power. I thank you for a choir who, at the last minute, gave us this song because I asked for it. I thank the, the music director and the choir for a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. In your honor, God, I ask now that you move me to move them. And I ask it all in your son Jesus' name, so it may be so. Amen. Amen. Now, if you feel like an amen or an aha or a whatever, just let it loose. <clears throat> Except him. In, in her book, Our Tribe, Reverend Dr. Elder Nancy Wilson states that this is a story between two women, a novella. And I like that. It kind of sets the stage here for kind of says to us, hey, you know, this is, this is a different kind of story. You know, we have the woman at the well, we have Deborah the general, we have, you know, we have odds and ends of women popping up all over, named and unnamed. But today it's, it's a different kind of story. It's a story between the love of two women, a passionate, <coughs> moving story. A story that says, you know, don't, don't make me go away. Please don't. Me stay. Help me stay with you and be with you forever. I mean, gosh, you can turn on the TV at any time of the day or night and see a novella like that. But it's usually between guy and girl. But this is juicy, wonderful literature in the Bible. Today, my siblings, I'm asking you begging you to suspend what we normally do during sermons. Um, we're going to ask Carol and Marty and Marge to come up. And I'm going to set the stage for you, tell you a little bit about the Ruth and Naomi story. Marty, do you need a chance? Now, for today, and just today only, the part of Naomi will be played by, will be represented by Martin, and the part of Ruth, Carol, and our narrator today will be March. Now, you heard Ted speak the words from this, this book, and it was a man's pers perspective and a man's words. But I want you to listen now as Marge reads a little bit from a woman's Listen with your heart, not just your ears, but your heart. Listen passionately. One day, Naomi got herself together. She and her two daughters-in-law leave the country of Moab and set out for home. She had heard that God had been pleased to visit his people and give them food. And so she started out from the place she had been living, 
she and her two daughters-in-law, with her, on the road back to the land of Judah. After a short while on the road, Naomi told her two daughters-in-law, Go back! Go home and live with your mothers, and may God treat you as graciously as you have treated your deceased husbands and me. May God give each of you a new home and a new husband. She kissed them, and they cried openly. They said, no, we're going on with you to your people. But Naomi was firm. She said, go back, my dear daughters. Why would you come with me? Do you suppose I still have sons in my womb who can become your future husbands? Go back to your daughters. On your way, please. I'm too old to get a husband. And even if I said, there's still hope. This very night, and had a man, and had sons. Can you imagine being satisfied to wait until we were grown? Would you wait that long to get married again? No, dear daughter. This is a bitter pill for me to swallow, more bitter for me than for you. God has dealt me a hard blow. Again, they cried openly. Orpah, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth embraced her and held on. Naomi said, look, your sister-in-law is going back home to live with her own people and God's. Go with her. But Ruth said, don't force me to leave you. Don't make me go home. Where you go, and I will go. And where you live, I live. Your people are my people, and your God is my God. Where you die, I will die. And that is where I will be buried. So help me, God, not even death itself is going to come between. And then Naomi saw that Ruth had her heart set on going with her, and she did. And so the two of them traveled on together to Bethlehem. Sounds a little different, doesn't it? Feels a little different. Mm -hmm. Naomi teaches Ruth how to go to Boaz, her cousin, her kinsman, and to, to sleep with him. And they conceive a child. This child is Obed, a key player in this story. And Obed becomes Jesus' direct marriage. How beautiful. How beautiful is the feeling that they give to us. In her book, um, Listen to Her Voice, author Mickey Rabin says, The Book of Ruth is an exquisite tale about the bond between women. The narrator narrative is unique in scripture because it centers around a female family struggling for survival in a man's world. It is a story of women's culture and women's values. It is about absolute commitment, embracing connection and love as a spiritual path. Moab is a place. Moabites are their people. Now, the Israelites didn't like the Moabites very much. They were despised, actually, because they refused, when the Israelites were in, in, in the desert wandering, to give them water, to, to even make you know, a nice gesture to even give them water. And it's, the Israelites thought that they, they were morally depraved because they were descendants from the incestuous union between Lot and his oldest daughter following the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the pairing of these people is really unique. What was to happen 
It wasn't supposed to be. They never should have been together, but they were. God put these women together to build a beautiful friendship, a beautiful relationship, and a relationship to the coming Christ. So, together they forged. Ruth went out into the fields and picked grain. Some call it gleaning after the harvest is, is, is ha happened. She went out and provided for Naomi as a man. <coughs> Naomi was literally cut off from her community. She didn't have any sons. She didn't have a husband. She didn't have any brother-in-laws to marry her. Nothing. So here this woman says, let me, let me do that for you. Let me take care of that for you. I know a lot of lesbians that have said that. I know a lot of lesbians who have provided for their partners. I know a lot of gay men who have done that. It isn't just between straight people that that happens. Now we know. We know we're in the Bible. We know it for a fact. We saw it with our two, two eyes. We heard it with our ears and we listened with our hearts. I'm asking you, when you read the Bible, to read it with different eyes, with different heart, with different ears. Know that we are there between those pages and those relationships and those people. We are God's people. We are chosen, loved, made in God's image. Mm -hmm. I have a t-shirt that says, I'm, I'm made in God's image. Mm -hmm. Might not be your, your God's image, but <laughs> I want to now invite you, all of you, to look around the room as I ask the women of the community to rise where they are sit sitting. Please rise. There are not very many of them, are there guys? Thirteen. But they are here, and they are powerful, and they are beautiful. Amen. Some of them are cancer survivors. Some of them are survivors of other things, of incest, of abuse. They are here and they are powerful. And they are loving and important. And they are creators just like men are. I wanted you to see in a very different way this morning the women here in this community. I know what it's like to be invisible. I was once a female. I know what it's like to week after week sit in the seat. Somebody may acknowledge us in the community. I'm not asking for special privileges for you. I'm not asking for you to go out of your way. I'm just asking you to look in a different way. Who sits beside you in church? Who lives beside you at home? Who lives beside you in the world? And the women of the community said to me, Ruth is better to you. And seven sons. And that, my brothers and sisters, 